we're back. So I simulated a week or two. I just want to get show you the update to the Lions. So far in the season, we've got this. We've got Tortora, Suzuki, and Picard in the first line. Suzuki's off to a nice start. Six points, five games. Such a wicked playmaker. I'm still hoping I can get a guy in the wing. That's maybe a little bit of an upgrade from Tortora, but he's no way, and he's got some pretty good finishing statistics here for getting open as a point producer. So I think he might be okay, depending on how we do. We started off 0-3, I think, and then we actually, or 0-2, I guess, and then won a couple games. We got Silvos here. I don't know if it's a glitch in the game or what. Um, they were, like, on the team, but it, I didn't get the message to say they've been called up by Vancouver. And uh, generally, unless you're like a first round pick, guys that lowly rated aren't going to stick in the NHL. So I wasn't sure. And then when I went to his profile here, it said send back to Barry. So I didn't know if that was um, a mistake or not. But anyways, I figured to be realistic, he was on Barry because he was in real life. So I didn't know if that was something in the game. Um, <clears throat> I took advantage of, but I figured it was realistic because that's where they were in real life. So I put him and Tucker back on the Colts here, but I wasn't sure. In the future, I'll just kind of leave that. I wasn't sure if that was a glitch or not. Because they haven't been signed in the NHL, so I don't think... Um, I don't think they were going to stay much longer anyway. So, we got uh, the boys back now. Tucker here and Hill, 13-14 rated defensemen. So, as soon as we got them back, we won two games in a row. So, definitely made a difference. And, uh, as you can see on the schedule here, we got Windsor, Kingston, a couple uh, little weaker teams. And Hamilton's actually last place right now in the game, so... 0-5. So there's definitely some winnable games coming up. I'm going to be looking at a couple guys. One guy to trade for, I definitely have my eyes on, is Yuli. Uh, if you see here, he's a perfect third, fourth line guy. Doesn't have a ton of value because he's only about 6-5 and five playmaker and score. And doesn't have very good offensive ratings. But if you look, he's actually a 14 rated grinder with 15 strength and 13 hitting. So he's just a fourth line enforcer. And he actually has a little bit of um a little bit of ability on offense to as a 19 year old and he's probably a guy that would be he hasn't been drafted obviously so he's probably a guy that could be back as no way next year so i'd really think it'd be beneficial uh to have a couple good years because i'm loaded with oh ones which will be the 19 year olds next season so Yuli, if he was back next season i could get my hands on him he would be a really good OA to put with all the skilled 2001s I have, like Suzuki and those guys. I already have a couple first and second liners, and then I have Del Monte and a couple of good young players. So, and what I was thinking is I get him this year, probably pretty easily, maybe a second round pick, probably not even, uh, probably trade like a guy like Piercy or something, maybe, who doesn't have a ton of value for me right now, and get my hands on two years of Yuli, which would be pretty nice to have. I um, was thinking you try to get as many 19 year olds on your third and fourth lines as you can in the years that you're for it instead of developing and because I'm thinking this year next year my team should be pretty solid with those goalies I have and Suzuki and those guys so what uh, the timeline kind of matches up nicely for that so I'm going to try to make a move for Yuli here he um, also has some teammates here that I think I could potentially work out a deal for I really like um, that's young to first round defense and they have and so I'm going to stick to the real life rules Jack uh, Madeir he was the first, late first round pick for them, the last pick of the first round. That's uh, really good trade value. He's a beast. So what I'm thinking is if I could pair him and um, he's a right-hand shot too. So if I had to get him, that would be massive because they're in a year they might be going for it. So if I'm not doing too hot in January, what I could potentially do, I probably won't happen, like I said, because this is kind of like a decent year for me. I should be pretty solid. But if shit hits the fan, what I'm thinking is I'll probably – Try to get a package together for Yuli and Meteor. That would be good um, kind of load up for next year a little bit. So if I'm not, have like say I don't have a winning record come January. Because that's when the trade window is open for first. You can only trade for first round pick rookies. Can't trade for second and third and fourth round picks like the 16 year olds. And you can only trade for them in a certain trade window. I think in like the end of December until January 10th, the trade deadline. So it's a really short window. And um, in real life, they have no trade clause. They have to wait to... So what I could do is stick to that maybe in January, depending on my record, go for him because I'd really like – I'd have two dominant defensemen for a few years if I could get uh, him and Yuli, maybe give up Tyler Tucker a couple 
what I would do in that situation is give up a couple guys that won't be on the team next year. Tyler Tucker would have a lot of trade value because he's too good. He'll be in the AHL next year. He won't be in OA. So I could potentially trade him. And then, um, let's see here, probably a guy like, don't have a lot of trade value. You could get rid of Wim, Wilms maybe if they want to upgrade their last OA spot. He's uh, my captain. I guess not in the game, actually. Suzuki is, but... So, yeah, we'll look at... Uh, Picard would probably have my most value. He's um, another guy that won't be back next year. He'll be in the AHL, so... That uh, is kind of what I'm going to pl plan for right now, but I think I'll uh, stop that video now. I just kind of want to show you guys a little update in the first few games. As you can see in my lines here, I got Wilms and Del Monte team together, the OA and the 16-year-old. I got Del Monte as a playmaker. I'm uh, trying to get him... He hasn't had a super hot start. Only one assist in five games. Trying to get him up. Uh, he's not going to be performing too well until he gets his left winger experience up. Right now, he's just a 14. His size went up, though, if you notice. I think he was 5'11", 164. So he gained 15 pounds already in the first progression for the October update. It doesn't show anywhere, but I just remember that's what his size was listed at. And I think Piercy gained a inch on his height, which is pretty cool. He's six foot now. I think in real life, he's listed at 6'1", 190. So... Kind of nice to see your young guys growing a little bit and get some size. Love the development part of the game. That's really the funnest part. So, yeah, I was just kind of waiting on that. And um, I think Sargowski has a left winger too. So he's a guy, and they're only at 13 experience at a position. It means they're going to be playing a lot less, a uh, lot worse than their ratings indicate because they're not experienced at a position yet. So I'm assuming early in the season with a couple guys playing out of position. I think I got a third guy playing really out of position too is uh, – not Fleming, actually. Who is it? Big Null, I think. Big Null is learning right wing. So it's going to be a little rusty, but once Christmas time comes around, those guys get closer to 20 rating for the experience factor. I think my team will start being a little bit better. So anyways, that's the update for now. I'll probably do another one in a month or so.